All right, let's get down to matrix inversion and talk about one method that you can use to calculate the matrix, excuse me, the inverse of a matrix A. That first method that we're going to talk about is matrix inversion by the method of cofactors. So what we first do is calculate the matrix of cofactors. Then we just take the transpose of that and divide it by the determinant of the original matrix A. So let's first calculate the determinant. I will use the matrix extension method given the matrix A here that we've used previously. It's 4, 6, 2, 6, 16, 3, 2, 3, 9. If you remember the matrix extension method we're just going to take these first two columns and add them over here again. 4, 6, 16, 6, 16, 2, and 3. So if you recall, to find the determinant of this matrix A, we are going to multiply 4 times 16 times 9 first. So 4 times 16 times 9. And this is blue. This is going to be plus. We're going to use green for the next one. 6 times 3 times 2. And then red. if it works, plus 2 times 6 times 3. But that's not all. We next are going to subtract some sums. It's going to be 2 times 16 times 2 minus 3 times 3 times 4. minus 9 times 6 times 6. So reducing that down, we get 576 plus 36 plus 36 minus 64 minus 36 minus 300 324, which is going to equal 224, which is our determinant. So because the determinant does not equal 0, we know that there is an inverse. Now I'm just going to write A here again to remind us, because it's kind of scribbled out there. It's 4, 6, 2, 6, 16, 3, 2, 3, 9. And I need it written clearly here, at least I do, so that we can calculate the matrix of co excuse me, of cofactors, which we will call C. So I'm gonna write this quite largely. So if you recall from video three point twenty seven on the method of cofactors, uh, to get a matrix of cofactors, we're going to take the cofactor of each element. We also need to remember this matrix of alternating ones and negative ones. So in getting cofactors, the first element, which is uh, the first cofactor that we're going to get, the first element of the first row will get multiplied by 1, and the second element by negative 1, and then 1, negative 1. And I'll show that here. So our first one is going to be the cofactor of 4, which is our first element. So if you recall, 4 is in the first row and the first column, so we're going to block that out, and we're left with 16, 3, 3, 9.
Okay. The next one will have to be a negative because we're going to multiply it by negative 1. So this, the 6, it's in the first row and the second column, so we're left, if you can see that, with 6, 3, 2, 9. And then you do the same thing for the third element, and we're left with 6, 16, 2, 3, and this is multiplied by 1. Now before we only did the first, the first row, really the first column as well, so now when we go down to the second row, we're going to have the element 6. So we're gonna, 6 is in the second row, and it's in the first column. So what we're left with, let's see if I can show this better, if you can see, sorry. We're going to be left with 6, 2, 3, 9. That should be smaller. There we go, 6, 2, 3, 9, which you can see there. And this is multiplied by negative 1. So 6, 2, 3, 9. And I'll show you one more. The next value is 16. It's in the second column and the second row. So we cross that out. And we are going to be left with 4, 2, 2, 9. And need for each element. So we're going to be left, this is negative, with this. Six, two, sixteen, three. Okay. So now let's get the cofactor. So we're gonna just as you we're gonna get the determinant here. So we have sixteen times nine minus three times three here. And I'll go ahead and write that out so you can see what I'm doing. So we have 16 times 9 minus 3 times 3. And then 6 times 9 minus 2 times 3. Then 6 times 3 minus 2 times 16. Then this one's going to be multiplied by negative 1. 6 times 9 minus 3 times 2. 4 times 9 minus 2 times 2. 4 times 3 minus 2 times 6. Last row, 6 times 3 minus 16 times 2. 4 times 3 minus, this is a 6. 6 times 2. And then we have 4 times 16 minus 6 times 6. When we simplify that, we're left with, this is going to be 135, negative 48, negative 14, negative 48, 32, 0, negative 14, 0, and that's just 28, excuse that dot there. We then are going to take the transpose of C. If we look here, this so happened to be a symmetric matrix. The original metric, uh, matrix was symmetric. So C will also be equal to the transpose of C. You can see that if we did the transpose of this, we'd be left with the same thing. So I'll just spare some writing room and some time for y'all. And uh, just know that that is the transpose of C. Now we can divide that by the determinant of A. So we're actually going to have the inverse of A is equal to the transpose of this C here divided by the determinant of the original matrix A, which we found to be 224. So it's going to be 135, negative 48, negative 14, negative 48, 32, 0, 
negative 14, 0, and 28. And we're going to divide that by 224, multiply by 1 over 224. And what we're left with is the following values. 0 0.603, negative 0 0.214, negative 0 0.063, negative 0 0.214, point 0 0.1430, negative 0 0.630, zero, and 0 0.125, 1 in. So we finally have the inverse of A matrix. And we can verify that this is, is indeed the inverse by multiplying A, either pre-multiplying or post-multiplying, in either order since both are symmetric, and showing that the resultant product matrix is an identity matrix, as we talked about in the last video. So A times the inverse of A equals, we have A, 4, 6, 2, 6, 16, 3, 2, 3, 9, times what we got here. I'm just going to write it one more time. Okay, when you multiply that out, it indeed equals an inverse matrix. Of course, it must be 3 by 3. And there you go, we just verified um, that this is indeed the inverse of A matrix right here. Congratulations. So let's go over to Excel real quick, and I'll show you that this is indeed true again. Okay, so I have A here, and I went ahead and found the determinant of A using M-D-E-T-E-R-M -E function. And then I just uh, input the values here for the inverse of A matrix that we found over here by hand. Okay, so I took these values and just divided them by 224. The determinant. So let's do matrix multiplication to find out if this is indeed an inverse matrix. So we're going to take A and then inverse of A, control shift return, and it does come out to be an inverse matrix. So there you go, that's the method of cofactors to find uh, the matrix inversion of our original matrix A.